welcome to our review on insulating your home. First thing, we've got a few key terms we actually need to understand here. So first one is the heat source, which is the hotter region. And the second one, the sink, is the colder region. So to try to help you remember this, then obviously in the bottom corner there, we've got a little picture of a baby sitting in a sink. So if we think about the sink being a colder region, kind of explains that really happy look on the baby's face there. Now, what we find is that energy is going to flow from the source to the sink. So in the case of our little baby at the bottom there, obviously the baby is the heat source and the water surrounding it is the sink. So water flows from the baby into the cooler sink. So what we find there is the source cools down and the sink warms up as a result. So the baby gets colder and the water gets warmer. In terms of energy transfers, depending on the actual purpose, we may be looking to either maximize it or minimize it. So if we think about examples of in our home where we're trying to maximize the energy transfer, the first one is in the boiler. So in our boiler, we've obviously got quite a significant amount of water and we have a heating element at the bottom. So the reason we've placed that heating element at the bottom is because we're then going to set up a convection current which is going to heat the rest of the water in the boiler. So obviously the water that comes into contact with the heating element gets heated up, it becomes less dense, it rises, and then it will transfer that heat energy to surrounding particles. So what we see is that convection current sets up and that means we heat the boiler efficiently. If we consider radiators then, we've got a large surface area on any radiator in our homes. And the whole idea there is to maximize the amount of energy we're gonna be transferring from the radiator to the air in our room. Now, on the other side of things, we will also have certain scenarios where we want to minimize the energy transfer. And the examples there are double glazing and cavity walls. So we obviously want to reduce the amount of energy that we're losing from inside our home to the outside surroundings. So we can do this by reducing conduction and convection. However, we're never going to be able to prevent all of our energy losses from the home. There will always be a small amount of energy lost through radiation. So if we consider what we can do to reduce these energy losses in our home, the key thing is insulating it. So we can actually reduce the amount of energy we lose through conduction, convection and radiation through installing different types of insulation within the home. So the image I've given you in the middle there is of a cavity wall. So what we've actually got in the majority of houses is a cavity wall construction. So that means you've got one wall on the outside, a gap, and then a wall on the inside. So what we find is that if that gap was merely filled with air, then air's a good thermal insulator. But the downside is that if it's only got air there, we're going to generate convection currents. And if we've got convection currents, that's going to be able to transfer the heat from the inside wall to the outside wall. So what we find is that to stop this, we can actually fill that space with something like expanded polystyrene or some other insulating material. And what that does is it traps little pockets of air. So this means we're still going to be able to use those thermal insulator properties of the air to try to reduce, obviously, the transfer of the heat energy from inside the house to outside. But because it's trapped in little pockets, we won't get convection currents. So that means that we won't be transferring the energy from the inside wall to the outside wall, and therefore we reduce our energy losses. Last thing we need to consider is something called the payback time. So this is basically the calculation you should do to work out if an energy saving method is worth doing or not. So to calculate payback time, all you've got to do is the cost of the installation divided by the amount you save per year. And this will then give us the length of time it's going to take to recover the money we've spent. So what we're looking for ideally is a nice short payback time, because the shorter the payback time, the more cost effective the installation method actually is. So I've given you an example at the bottom there that loft insulation costs £250 to install and that will save £100 a year. So to work out our payback time, all we've got to do is cost divided by the savings per year. So 250 divided by 100 gives us two and a half years to have made back our money. So this one is a very cost effective insulation method.